Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for his goodness and his mercy, for his loving kindness, for his grace, and his truth. Amen. We welcome all joining by Facebook, the Lord's House of Prayer for all people. Since you look at the word, Friday night Bible study, prayer Bible study, for the word of God reminds us, wherefore laying aside all malice and all God and all hypocrisies and all envies, and all evil speaking as newborn babes desire the sense and milk of the word that you may grow thereby if so be you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. And so <clears throat> thank God we are a little late. So we're going to jump right into the word. Amen. And we started dealing on uh, Tuesday night from Isaiah 60. We want to go back there. We just want to look at a few things. Amen. Because God is speaking to us through his word. Amen. Just helping us understand the times that we're in. Amen. And sometimes we talk about all that the devil is doing. Amen. But we want to position ourselves so that people are be able to talk about all God is doing Amen. through us. Amen. Amen. Because I believe the reason why the devil is able to do so much is because he got so many willing participants. Amen. Because Amen. so many people, you know, we, um, as we're going to learn with um, the way people are, when, when the devil came to Jesus and offered him, he said, I give you all of this if you just bow down and worship me. Of course, Jesus didn't do it, but people are doing it all the time, and because they want what the devil has, amen, and guess what, you'll do it too if you want what the devil got bad enough, and that's why I say God cleanse me from all desires that are not of you, amen, because so many people are bowing down, and, and I guess one of the um, things is sometimes you don't even realize when you're bowing down to the enemy. Amen. But um, thank God for his word because he'll help us to understand it. So let's go back to Isaiah 60. Amen. We want to look at a few things. The Lord was showing me a few things earlier today. He says, and he's talking to the church. And the church, we are the church. We are the body of Christ. As we always say, it's not this physical building, but rather his people everywhere. Amen. We make up the church. Amen. And he says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And we know Jesus is our light. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him nothing was made that was made. Then it says, In him was life, and the life that was in him was the light of men. So we have to understand that um, when he said that light is come, he's talking about the knowledge of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ. That's the light, amen, that we have to have shining in us and through us. So he said, arise, arise, and what does that mean? Rise from that sleep of death, and you have he quickened. I'm tying these scriptures together. And you have he quickened who were what? Dead in trespasses and sin. And it's time for the church to rise out of its sinful state. Amen. Because the church is in a, um, much of the church is in a sinful state. Just like in the Old Testament. What would happen with Israel? God would deliver them. And they'd be okay for a while. And then what happened? They would go right back into sin. And then... God would let the enemy take hold to them, and then they cry out to God, and God would what? Deliver them again, and then they'd be okay for a minute, and then the next thing you know, they lose their focus, forget all that God has done, and what? Go right back into sin. And that was the constant habit of Israel then. But guess what? 
Unfortunately, it's the constant habit of some of Israel now, how God delivers us. Amen. But if we're not careful, what happened? We'd be all right for a while, but then we find ourselves what? Drifting right on back into the things that God has delivered us from. And the writer said, if we build again the things that we tore down, we make ourselves transgressors. Amen. And so God is calling his church to arise out of that sleep of sin. As I always say, you either dead in sin or you dead to it. You have to figure out which one, where you are, so you can make the proper choice of what you need to do. Arise and shine. Amen. And for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. And again, we're talking about Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is in us, the hope of glory. And we have to find ourselves um, surrendering day by day to his will and to his way so that he can what? work through us. I mean, remember, well, we all remember how we used to let the devil just what? Work through us. Amen. Well, it's the same thing. Only the difference is you, we have to allow Jesus to work through us, submitting ourselves to him. Amen. And so you know, he said, the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. <clears throat> now I want to deal with this for a little bit. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people is going to cover the people. And gross darkness, that means um, thick darkness, a, a dark, a heavy dark cloud. Amen. And so that's what we are seeing, a, a gloom, a thick darkness. But what is the darkness that he's talking about? This is what God was dealing with me about to remind us. Okay. Go with me briefly to um, Luke the third, um, Luke chapter eleven. We're gonna start at verse thirty-three, I believe. Go there, Luke chapter eleven. I believe it's chapter eleven. Let me make sure. Yes, Luke chapter 11, verse 33. Okay, it says, No man, when he hath lighted a candle, and that's what, when you get saved, you get filled with the Holy Ghost, that's what um, happens to you. God lights your candle with the light of his word. But he said, no man, when he have lighted a candle, put it in a secret place. Hides it. Remember what I said? Um, we can't isolate ourselves. We have to get insulated so that we can be in the world without becoming a part of the world. Okay? Okay. No man, when he have lighted a candle, put it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. Okay. Now, another place it says, let your light so shine, or shine in such a way that men might see your good works. Glorify who? Your Father, which is in heaven. Remember, we talked about that Tuesday night. He's supposed to get all the glory. No matter what we do on our job, in our homes, um, in, when we come and assemble, in the grocery store, wherever we are, God wants to get glory out of our life. So the people might be saved. Okay? But look at verse 34. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, Thine whole body also is full of light, but when thine eye is evil or divided, thou, thy body also is full of what? 
darkness, but I want you to pay attention to what he's about to say. Okay. Take heed, therefore, that the what? Light. The light which is in thee be not what? Darkness. How can light be darkness? Amen. See, now watch this. When we're talking about light here, you have to understand this. We're talking about knowledge. Okay. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about knowledge. So let me read it a little different way. Take heed, therefore, that the knowledge which is in thee be not darkness. Because he said, behold, darkness is going to what? Cover. That's what we are seeing. Darkness is covering the whole earth. And it's been covering the earth. But it's getting darker and darker. I was um, on YouTube the other day. Something caught my attention and I was looking into it. And these people were having a discussion of why so many, even young black women, not just young black women, but a lot of them are doing it, are turning to witchcraft. Yeah. It's a lot of people. They're leaving the church and going to witchcraft. There's a show that is called The Craft. It's a movie. And they say every time they play that movie, a whole lot of young girls are drawn into witchcraft. Okay. Because that's where we're going back to. People talk about America as being, we're living in a post-Christian America. Because so many people are turning from Christianity back to that old, the, the pagan religion. A witchcraft. That's what we're learning about Freemasonry at its very core is what? Witchcraft. Look at the movies and the things that they have on. What are they full of? Darkness. Darkness. Witchcraft. And sometimes you think they just playing like they casting spells. No, they're not. Like I said, I watched that movie, um, Lord of the Rings, I never forget this one part when one of the guys is about to be drawn in and go for the ring, the sorcerer in it, he starts speaking this other language. But you can tell it's a dark language. And I promise you that they used, what he was doing was casting a spell. He was speaking dark knowledge. Because it stopped the man from moving. But he wasn't just playing. This ain't bewitched stuff. This is real, real witchcraft. Look at Harry Potter. That ain't, that ain't play. But look how many, it's so many even saints that allow their children to read them books and look at them movies. Not realizing they're being indoctrinated into what? Witchcraft. Because darkness is what? Covering the earth. The light is being put out. You, Even when people preach the gospel so many times, the gospel, they mix it with witchcraft. It was a book. Now this was supposed to be a, a preacher that wrote this book. It was called, um, it was talking about prayer circles. Okay. He was talking about drawing a circle and then getting in and praying in it. And, and so God can answer your prayers. And so he gave an example of somebody who was supposed to have been, I think it was a historical person that did that. I forget his name. It escapes me now. I have to get it. But in his time, it wasn't raining. And so what he did is he drew a circle. And he got in it. I believe he got in it. And he prayed in it. And he 
eventually it rained. So I'm looking up this person because this was a Christian art. Matter of fact, some of you may have heard, you, you probably heard of Jensen Franklin. Some, anybody? No, okay. But he was, he's a big preacher. And I used to like to listen to him because he used to preach holy. Or you used to? <laughs> used to. Because he was the one that I heard talking about these prayer circles. And he was talking about his friend that wrote the book. So I went and looked up the book. Come to find out, he, the person that he was referring to in the book was a sorcerer. Mm. But they were bringing that witchcraft, what? Into the church. Darkness is what? Covering. <laughs> and then I saw it. And so I saw um, somebody that I knew that they had the book. Mm. And so I told him, I said, I, I, you know, I hear, because what happened is I went and looked and looked in, into one of the witches' books, and they looked to this same man for their inspiration. Because this is what witches, this is a part of witchcraft. They draw these circles, then they get in these circles and cast their spells and do all these hexagons. This is what they do. But it's getting so dark. that witchcraft can come into the church and the preachers don't even realize it's witchcraft. They far gone. Right. <laughs> See? And so that's why God is having to raise up people that understand these things. See? And, and that's why his light has to rise up on us because you're going to have to be able to recognize because the darkness is in the church. A lot of stuff Anybody heard of the book, The Secret? Mm -hmm. See, that's witchcraft. But a lot of people in the church, why? Because it teaches you how to draw wealth to yourself. Mm -hmm. But you have all of this stuff. It's the darkness. What did we say the light was? Knowledge. So what he's saying here, let's read it again. Verse because I want, I want to draw attention to uh, verse 34 again. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when the eye is single, it's, it's focused. It's one thing. It's not good and evil. See, this is what he's talking about. Because this is what we have in, in the uh, occult religions. Good and evil are one and the same. How many saw Star Wars? Okay. Star Wars, who who was who, what what what's the star that what's his name? The the the, the 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 guy that was Luke Skywalker. Who did his daddy turn out to be? Darth Vader. And that's why they had that that same spirit. It's what? The yin and the yang. Now, Luke Skywalker, what color did he wear? White. What color did Darth Vader wear? But when you see the yin and the yang, what is it? It's the light and the darkness mixed together. And that's why the Bible says, Jesus said, I wish you were hot or cold. See? He don't want no mixture. In the Old Testament, they couldn't wear garments that were different material. I mean, we can't now because we ain't under the Old Testament. Under the Old Testament, you, you couldn't have cotton and rayon mixed. It's going to either be cotton or rayon. It had to be single. No mixture because he was helping us to understand something. Because there's too much mixture in the church. And God is seeking to purify his people so that we are single-minded. This is what has to happen. Even in the Old Testament, he said, you don't plow your field with an ox and a mule. Either you have two mules or two oxes. 
This is what he's trying to get us back to. That's why we don't do what? Inner faith. It ain't but what? One faith. One Lord. One baptism. One God. One Father. But what is happening is the darkness is so that now you have all of this inner faith stuff. What they call ecumenical. We find our common ground. Why? Because darkness is what? Covering. One of the greatest, and we're going to talk about him probably, maybe Sunday, but in the series we're dealing with, um, John Paul, what was he doing? I believe he was that white, the, the rider of the white horse, and he was going around um, bringing Protestants back into the Catholic Church. And that's why you got so much mixture. And that's why it's important for us to um, let God purify our hearts from all mixture. And the church is, 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 is really diluted. Let, let, me, um, let me finish this and then I want to show you something else. Okay, so he says, The light of the body is the eye, therefore when the eye is single, our whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Take heed therefore that the light or the knowledge which is in thee be not darkness. Take heed to what? The word of God. If thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, what did Jesus tell us in 1 John, the first chapter? God is light, and in him there is what? No darkness at all. None. So if we his people, shouldn't be what? No darkness in us. Rise and shine. Your light has come. Get in the word. Get that word in you and let it purify you from all what? Darkness. All ungodly knowledge. That's what it's about. Amen. Don't get caught up in the witchcraft that's coming into the church. Don't get caught up in, in, in all of this folk adding to the word and taking from the word. You, got, you have to uh, you keep it pure. So he said, take heed that the light, the knowledge that is in you be not darkness. Take heed to the word. Okay? So if thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. That's what we're working on. This is what God is telling us. And that's why, um, and, and I'm praying, even myself, and I thank God for where he brought me from. I had, I, I had a lot of darkness in me. Why? Because a lot of stuff they used to teach us, if we're not careful, we stop um, abiding in it. Y'all know I talk a lot about what? Television? I talk about all forms of media. But why do I do that? Because they are, um, what does media mean, first of all? The media is a medium. That's really what it's about, a medium. And a medium is that which goes between two entities. So the media is the way that the enemy gets his knowledge where? In you. You watching all this stuff on TV. Who is it coming from? See, we, a lot of times we don't even deserve, we don't even think. Who is it coming from? Well, you can tell by what's in it. If it's full of darkness, who is it coming from? The devil. Because there's no darkness in God. Like he was talking about that Hollywood before. The right. Yeah. Hollywood is the wood that the witches make their wands out of. And the, the producers in Hollywood, believe me when I tell you, they are witches. And there's one thing I was looking at 
A lot of times, because we don't know no no better, we we don't we um, don't pick up some things. But I was looking at um, this uh, documentary when well the guy was a, he was breaking in all this witchcraft down. And one of the things he was showing is one of these. She's a female. I think she's a rapper. But she was on her Instagram or something, and she was talking about she had to clean up this place in her house. She said it was two, two years worth of um, Rue Hilly or something like that. And if you don't know what that word meant, it wouldn't mean anything to you. But what the word means is witchcraft. Mm. Because she's a witch. Mm. Mm. Okay. What do you think Jay Z is? What do you think Beyonce is? They witches. You know, you don't get up in that high echelon if you if you don't if you ain't um, bowing down to, to the devil. But a lot of saints, what? Listen to those people, and we don't understand how. It affects you. You ever picked up weight slowly and didn't even realize how it was affecting you until you start losing it? See, when we start cutting some stuff out of our lives, we're going to finally realize how some of this stuff has been affecting us and we didn't even realize. You're gaining that weight slowly. But the Bible said, lay aside what? Sin and ways. Get rid of all that darkness. I don't care how good the movie is. It ain't good to your spirit. It's good to your flesh. Your flesh is enjoying it. Because your flesh is aligned with the devil. And when that one of the young ladies, they was asking her why she, because she came out of the church. Her father's a preacher. And she went to witchcraft. You know why she went to witchcraft? Because God wasn't answering her prayers. Mm. She said that. Wow. So she went to witchcraft. And she said, now nah, she's getting her prayers answered. Mm. Yeah. But who she worshiping? <laughs> and he'll give you what you want if you just what? Because he want to be God. And that's what a lot of people are doing. And it's because this Knowledge is what? Covering the earth. You know, uh, I, I, uh, years back, I haven't seen one lately, but you know how they would have, for the Christian symbol, they would have the fish, and that would say you are, yeah. that's, that's what some people would do. But then, and they were saying born again Christian, they would have that on their bumper stickers and stuff. People started having born again pagan. Because a lot of people are going back to paganism. A lot of um, black folk are going back to ancestral worship, calling on their ancestors and stuff. You know, that's the darkness. A lot, a lot of people be going back to all that Egyptology stuff. All this, you have to be careful what trends you buy into just because it sounds good. And that's why you have to get in, in, in God's word. One place God told him, he rebuked him. He said, your, let me see if I can find that. Yeah, go, go to Isaiah chapter 1. I want you to keep your place in 60, but go to Isaiah chapter 1. Because he's talking to his people here. And if you can see clearly, you can see that this is just as relevant today as it was then. But he's telling us to rise and shine. We're going to start. Um, 
Isaiah chapter 1. We're going to start at verse 1 because I want us to get some knowledge out of this. Because he's really, he's speaking to us. And, and, and the thing is, we don't want to just hear the word. We want to be what? Doers of the word. That's why he's sending these words to us. So that we can prepare ourselves for what he's about to do through those that seek him. This is what he said. The vision of Isaiah. And what did the Bible say about visions? Where there is no vision, the people will perish. So what the vision that he's talking about? He ain't talking about fundraising. He's talking about here, the word of God. Because that's what the prophets had with vision. Listen to what he said. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, um, Jothan, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, hear, O heavens, give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. This can be said about church today. We look where he brought us from, and look how we really responded to him. They've rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know my people doth not consider. All sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord, they have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger, they are gone away backwards. They backslide. You know that a lot of folk don't even believe you can backslide? That's that darkness. One save all ways say. That's darkness. But listen what he said. You've gone away backwards. Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revoke more and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. You know the crisis that the church is in is a leadership crisis. Those that call themselves heads of the church. But when you look at how they live, you understand, he's saying the whole head is sick. <clears throat> and the heart is faint. From the sole of the foot even into the head, there is no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified, nor with ointment. Your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. And the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. Saints, believe me when I tell you. God has left us a very small remnant. You go to these churches now, a lot of times, probably more unsaved folk in there than saved folk. I hate to say it, but we need to deal with reality. Just like what they did, the, the, the prophet. See, true prophets have to say stuff that ain't popular, mm -hmm. that don't make you feel good in order to get your attention. And the Lord told me, he said, I didn't call you to scratch folk itching ears. Ain't that what the book said would happen? In the last time, people would have what? Itching ears. And they would turn their ears away from the truth and be turned to fables. Like Sister Luana was saying, how her um, pastor of, the, um, of her family church, they don't let him do too much speaking. <laughs> because when you tell the truth, they don't want to hear that. You know? And all you're trying to do is turn the people back to God. So that the judgment doesn't have to come. Because a lot of us ain't figured out. A lot of people, God had to show me. The Bible said, 
And we're going to look at it um, maybe Sunday, if we get to it Sunday. But during Antichrist time, the Bible says that um, the, the saints are going to be given into the hands of Antichrist, and he's going he gonna to wear out the saints. Why? Because we're going to have to go through a purifying process. That's what's, that's what's about to happen. Folks, y'all better, we better be ready. Remember what we read in Daniel. It says the people of understanding are going to instruct many, but yet the people of understanding, a lot of them are going to fall by the sword and in order to be what? Tested and tried. This is, we're going to have to go through something to be purified. But this is what he's saying. He's left us a very small remnant. He said unless he had left us a very small remnant we should have been like Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah which was completely overthrown. Hear the word of the Lord ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God ye people of Gomorrah. Now is he talking to us? was talking to his people even though it was Jerusalem they were acting like Sodom and Gomorrah you be you might wouldn't be surprised but you might would be surprised the level that homosexuals have taken over the church homosexuality in the church is rapid I listened to them and they said that some of these conventions they're just out in the open not even hiding it. And this has been going on for a while. Because years back you had on the general board you had homosexuals. No homo I ain't talking about people that oh we didn't know they were that way. No. Mm -hmm. That's why he's talking to his people but he can't call them Jerusalem. <laughs> he said he ruled us of Sodom. And go mom. He said, Here, judgment is coming. <laughs> People can play if they want to. Verse 11 To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. And a lot of the praise that is going up in the church, God don't got nothing to do with it. He's sick of it. Because we praising and we shouting and we dancing, but then we living like the devil. This is what he's talking about. He said, when you come to appear before me, verse 12, who have required this at your hand to tread my courts. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbath, the calling of assemblies I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meetings. The Bible says that the sacrifices of the wicked is an abomination unto God. How much more when he brings it with a wicked heart? We talked about even the Lord's Supper, how often people take it with all kind of unforgiveness and hatred and envy and strife in their heart and don't understand what they're doing. But God is speaking to us because he wants us to get ready. I keep telling us he's giving us time. And he's telling us these, these kind of messages come so that you can examine who? Yourself. Make sure you're in the faith. Because even though we are part of everybody that's a part of the body, I have no power over nobody but what goes on here. That's why I'm trying to make sure we get it. Right. Amen. Look at verse 15. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. So what does he encourage him to do? Wash you. Make you clean. 
Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now listen what he said in verse 19. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. This is what he says in verse 30, 21. How is the faithful city become a harlot? Look at some of these holiness denominations. They ain't faithful no more to God. They become harlots. That's it. And they connected themselves to the mother of harlots, which is the Catholic Church. I'm going to show you all that. So he said, how is the faithful city becoming harlot? It was full of judgment, righteousness large in it, but now murderers. <laughs> oh, this sounds so much like the church today. Look at verse 22. Thy silver is become dross, and thy wine mixed with water. Here we are again at what? That mixture. God is telling us, rise, shine, your light has come. It's time for us to get cleaned up. And seek the face of God and ask him everything in me that's not like you. Take it out. Because in the last days, them, the people that know their God are going to be strong and do exploits. But you can't know God in sin. You can't. The, the saints used to testify that they know him what? In the pardon <laughs> of their sin. Because you can't know him in sin. And so God is telling us, this is, this is to us. Your silver has become drunk, your wine mixed with water. Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth what? Yeah. Gifts. Ain't that the truth? And follow after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto them. Therefore, saith the Lord of the Lord of hosts, the mighty one in Israel, ah, I will ease me of my adversaries and avenge me of my enemies. Who are you talking to? Is he talking to the heathen or is he talking to his people? See, this is why we got to, we got to understand. We, 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 we love to say God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. But that ain't what the book said. It says, behold the goodness and the severity. <laughs> he ain't good all the time. So he can get... Anybody ever experienced the severity, the punishment of God? When you fail to walk according to his word, his goodness leads you to repentance. But when you don't obey his word and move in the way of repentance, what you're going to experience is his severity. And this is what we are not preaching. But the Bible still says it. And we're going to see it. And that's what, like I said, the great tribulation is about purifying. <laughs> and, and a whole lot of stuff that's going on, as the old folks used to say, we're going to see who live in holy after a while. But what God is telling us here, it's time for us to wake up, to rise. And I, I believe we're doing it. But he keep putting this word before us so that we don't lose sight of it. 
You know, it's so easy to get distracted in a world that is so full of what? Distractions. So full of darkness, as we talked about, the need for us to stay in the light so that we don't become a part of the darkness. Keep the word, meditating in the word of God day and night so that you don't become susceptible to all of this darkness, this knowledge, because that's what it's talking about. It's knowledge, the knowledge that is just spreading over the world. The darkness that is spreading over the world. You know, Islam is growing real fast. <laughs> A lot of these religions are growing real fast when true Christianity is on the decline. The devil done slipped these um, false um, teachers, these false apostles, these false prophets in the church, these um, homonging pastors and homonging evangelists, homonging prophets, until people don't even want to come to church. These money hungry folk and folk is just saying, I don't even want to go to church no more. Because of the darkness that that, that is coming to the church. But God is telling us, what I believe God is raising us to be is a beacon of light. Amen. So when people see our life, because watch this, let's go back. Let's go back to Isaiah 60. Let's go back here. I want to read a little bit more of this so you can see what's going to happen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go back to verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. And we're talking about the knowledge, the, the witchcraft, and the, all the false teachings shall what? Cover the earth, and gross darkness shall cover the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And there, because his glory is going to be seen on us, and we, we looked in um, seven, um, John 17 where Jesus said, I am glorified in them. Because his glory will be seen on us, look what's going to happen. Verse 3, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. And kings to the brightness of thy rising. So we have to let our light shine so that the unbelievers can see the knowledge of God in us. See the wisdom of God in us. And want what we have. Because, like I said, People are turning away from the church because there's too much folly in the church. But God said, I'm going to change that for, for, for my people. So the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall feel and be enlarged. Why? Because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. And that's what we're going to see as we what, arise and shine. Shine on your job. Shine in your home. Even a lot of, a lot of the children don't want to get saved because the parent is one thing in the church and, and, and another thing at home. Folk, folk on, on, on the job, you keep up so much um, mess on the job, who going to follow you to church? <laughs> huh? You're in the grocery store going off on folk. My father would tell the story. He was standing in line at, 
at the bank, yeah. and he was in the back in one of the saints. They didn't see him. They didn't know he was in there. And they were just going off. And he just sitting back there observing, listening. And then they happened to turn around. And oh, how I have a turn <laughs> Huh? <laughs> and here's the key when you really get it in your spirit yes. that the eyes of the Lord are in every place yes. beholding what? the evil and the good you won't have to have nobody physically watching but because darkness covers the world we 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 not conscious that God is there, but that's where we have to get to that consciousness. The Bible said, "Whatever we do, we are supposed to be doing that as unto the Lord anyway." On your job, your boss shouldn't have to be standing over you for you to do the right thing, because your boss is standing over you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Because sometimes people be trying to get me to, you know, go along with this and go on. I say, I got the answer to a higher power. Right, amen. Even sometimes when things are being done that could benefit me, I can't do them. Why? Because I got to give an answer to God. But I have to keep that consciousness. That's why I can't afford to be sleeping. Amen. When you go to sleep, you out of it. You're not conscious. But I got to seek to stay in the place. And that's where the devil is always trying to get us in a place yes. where of unconsciousness. Because when you're unconscious, honey, you can watch anything. They be cussing and lying and cheating and you be sitting up there eating it up. Not understanding how that's negatively affecting your spirit. When you're conscious, you say, I can't watch that because I don't right. want to be negatively affected by anything. Amen. God is trying to get us back to the place where this is the only thing that's in you. Think about it. Yeah. What kind of saint would you be if the only thing in your heart was the light of the word of God? But God is saying, wake up. Say it's Sunday. Arise. Time to shine, saints. Because darkness, and the darker it gets, I'm, 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 I'm going to help y'all understand with, and I'm, I'm closing for tonight, but I'm going to help y'all understand, um, and we, we dealt with it Sunday, um, second, um, what, second Colossians, um, I'm not going there tonight, but Second Colossians, when it talks about the Antichrist, it says, the mystery of iniquity that already worked, only he who now let it will let till it be taken out of the way. He who now restraineth will restrain until it be taken out of the way. Do y'all see how the he, what is the he? The word of God. Do y'all see how the word of God is being taken out of the way? Even in the church. The word of God is being removed because the word of God is light. So what happens when the light is removed? Automatically what happens? The darkness descends. <laughs> Amen. So God is keep telling us what? Wake up, arise, shine. And I'm saying God... Just take all the desires that are not of you. Take them out of my heart. So that I, and I thank God for what he's done already. But I don't know about nobody else. But I want a perfect work. I don't want to be half done. <laughs> How many like stuff half done? I look at these folk, they be talking about, ooh, that steak is cooked perfectly. Blood running everywhere. I said, no, I don't want to, I don't want to see no red. If it looked pink, take it back. That's, right. That's how God is. God don't want to see no pink. 
He don't want to see no flesh in you. When he look in you, he want to see his son. So I'm saying, God, okay, I still got some stuff in me. I, I, I know I still, Lord, take it out. And what do we say? It ain't going to be by power. It ain't going to be by might. It's going to be by his spirit. And all he needs us to do is say, yes, Lord. He'll, he'll take over from there. And stop us, us not wanting to hold on to stuff. He'll take it from you, but you're going to have to. Because he'll be trying to take stuff and we be like this. God be like We'd be like, you know. Hold on. Right. He said, I want to take it out of your life. It's going to make your life better. But we. Hold on to But when you get to that place where Mary said, Be it unto me according to your word. And you say, Here, here, God, take it. I can't give it up, but take it out of my life. Watch what he'll do for you. Let's give God the praise on tonight. Amen. We thank God for you on tonight. Amen. We thank God for what he's doing in our midst. Amen.